let's let's get right into it this time. Uh, let's yes. not lollygag. We lollygagged right. last week, uh, and uh, you know these are just little episodes that we want to just make little tiny space to keep yep. you fresh, keep us yeah. fresh. And we don't keep things we, going, and we, and we can't fill it with all this chit chat. It's just random, you know, discussion before we even start the podcast. Yeah, we're not even talking about magic just, here. Right. I mean, we're just talking and just filling space and, you know, we talk about this and we talk about that and we do this and we do that and we're just sort of talking and talking and talking and talking and just filling space before we even start the show. Andy, please, come on. Save me here. Hey, man, isn't that what podcasts are? <laughs> just talking. That I mean, that's honestly, that's kind of like where our podcast came from. Um, you know, I, I had mentioned this kind of in passing in the in Kyle episode in Kyle episode uh in the Kyle episode and like this podcast had started out because I was staying way too late at Bruce's deconstructing games that we just did talking about plays and you know having post game conversations and talking about the philosophy of of the game that we love and uh I just wanted to take another moment to thank everyone for listening and watching. And if you're new here, we don't usually ramble this much. But hey, mm-hmm. we we got two week break. We're ch- we're chilling for a bit. Uh, this is our second week. Uh, we do ten weeks on great produced wonderful content. We do two weeks, but we do t- tiny episodes. Uh, and uh, yeah. So this is week two. Last week we talked about uh, Brash Taunter. Bruce Woo! brought a great card. Uh, and this week I brought also a red card. Maybe because it's spring. Maybe because Brucon's coming and I just need to make another red deck. Uh, <laughs> who's to say? But uh, this this week on Temple of the False Pod. Oh yeah. Temple of a False Spot, where decks are not optimized, but our plays sure as heck are fun. I'm Andy. I'm Bruce. And uh, this week I brought <laughs> Electro Dominance. Electro Dominance is an instant for Red Red X. Electro Dominance deals X damage to any target. You may cast a card with converted mana cost, mana value, X or less, from your hand without paying its mana cost. Um, so. Obviously, the biggest thing about this card is that it gives instant to literally anything. Um, as long as this resolves, your neck, like the spell that you play from your hand, also has flash. Um, except if yeah. the card has X. That's that's the only downside here. Um, is that if you are play if you want to play an right. X spell, this isn't this isn't helpful. Yes, um, but it is an X spell, so if you wanted to play one, you are. Right, but I mean, like you know, I know, like off of off of this. <laughs> um, I I come back to this card every time I put a red deck together because, uh, well, a it's only come down in price, which is excellent for me uh, and my wallet. Uh, and two, it just I don't know, it it pleases me. Because you can keep your mana up the whole round, and then when it gets back to you, you're essentially either giving something haste, because you're going to be playing it at the end of somebody else's turn, but you're also like dealing a significant amount of damage, depending on how much mana you have, uh, to either a creature or a player. This, this like Brash Taunter, could be player removal. Heck, you could even target Brash Chanter with this. I don't know why you would. Uh, you can just dome somebody with it. But yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a pretty sweet card. I mean, say you've got you know eight mana up and you've got a six mana creature. You shock something for... Shock something for eight? You're hitting something for eight. Yeah. Shock is two. Uh, <laughs> you're hitting something for eight. Nope, six. You're hitting something for six. And then you're getting out a six mana creature. Um at instant speed, which is great. Right. Obviously, at the end of 
the previous person's turn, but it's also great as like a combat trick. Um, you can easily yes. deal with a, an attacking creature and make a blocker with this card. Uh, not alone, but you know, you know what I mean. Um, it is also helpful if you've got wraths. Uh, it makes, you know, any wrath instant speed. Oh, yeah. Um, things that are generally regulated, re relegated? Things that are normally sorcery speed. Uh, yes. Like wraths. Um, right. I mean, I know route, you can pay two extra to make it. Uh, right. Well, hey, with electro dominance, you're just going to pay two extra for any wrath. Exactly. And, and now you get to do, to do damage. a pile of damage. Uh, sure, it's costing you a card, but like it is giving you that flexibility beyond anything. Right, but it's also giving you that extra piece of damage. And, you know, quick note, if you're going to use a Wrath, don't do the damage to a creature. <laughs> Unless that creature has a shield counter. Um, right. Actually, no. Because I believe the card that you're playing off of this resolves first. Uh, so, yeah, no. Well, let, let, there are niche cases where it makes sense, but right. uh, if you're going to play a wrath off of this, target face, it's much better. <laughs> um, you had mentioned the idea of combat tricks, uh, mm -hmm. and honestly, with electro dominance, you can flash out blockers, um, and I love that idea. Uh, I just keep thinking to myself, you know, with eight mana, you could flash out Inferno Titan. Yeah, you can. And it deals three damage divided as you choose among one, two, or three targets. But if you choose one target, you've got the eight damage from Electro Dominance plus three more from the Inferno Titan. Six and eleven three, damage. Yeah, yeah or, it's, sorry, I mean that's nine still. You know. Yeah, that's nine damage, and you're getting a six-six with Fire Breathing, who is ready to block. Oh yeah. Or if you've done it at the end of end of your last opponent's turn. It essentially has haste. Oh, and by the way, you didn't have to pay the six mana on the same turn, so now that six mana can be used to pump up Inferno Titan. Um, I, yeah, I, Electro Dominance brings so much flexibility to so that it's almost to the point where the damage that Electro Dominance deals is just bonus. Mm. You know, this is not anybody who's played the card for a while. Electro Dominance is not a burn spell. Right. You know, you're not playing it to do the damage. You're playing it so that you can play another card at instant speed. And that's kind of... Uh, it, it, it's curious when, when you're playing a card where, um, you know, where a, a significant chunk of damage is just seen as... That's the throwaway part. Right. Yeah. And especially where, like, I... Like, this card, I would say... Like, while it belongs in Spellslinger decks, I would say that it's not necessarily only for Spellslinger decks. Like, like we were talking about, you can flash out blockers, you can flash out attackers, you can do all sorts of things. But, like, you can also flash out, you know, like, equipment, for instance. Um, you know, like, a lot of equipment have high costs and then high, relatively high equipped cost. So, like, say, Helm of the Host, for instance. Right. It's, four, it's four mana and then five to equip? I think so. But if you flash it out with this at the end of turn, the, you know, the end of your opponent's turn, uh, you're doing four damage to something, getting that out, and then you're untapping and attaching it to something. You're not, like, right. you're not necessarily wasting your turn getting it out. Um, right. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty excellent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I mean, like, this card does see play, a lot of play, but I honestly think it could probably see more. It's two, two red pips, but, like, it's, you know, if you're playing red, that's, that, if you're playing red and you have it have x big enough uh where it does like a big thing it you're not gonna care like the 
you're not restricted by the fact that it's two red pips. Like that's not it's it's easy to cast, is what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. If you're if the number is big enough, uh, you're at a point in the game where you have two red. Um. It's it's wonderful. I I I cannot speak highly enough about it. Um. I've got one coming in the mail because mm-hmm. uh, I ran out of them. <laughs> Too many red decks. Too many red decks. Um, my, uh, my, my magical Christmas land, my, my dream time, big dream to do thing, the tra- registered trademark, uh, is now thinking about this as an X spell. Because, like, I mean, I've always known yeah. it's an X-Bell. It has X in the cost. Hello. Uh, right. But I've never thought about it like that. Uh, I've never thought about it as an X-Bell. But say you're playing Gruul. And you may know where I'm going with this. Uh, and you may want this in your Buzzbark deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> there's a little card I like to call Unbound Flourishing uh, for two and a green. Uh, it's an enchantment. And when it says... Or it says whenever you cast a, a... Oh, it's a permanent spell. Farts! <laughs> Never mind. Oh, no. I could... Talk about not reading the card. The second part says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell or activate an ability, if that spell's mana cost or that ability's activation cost contains an X, copy that spell or ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. So you get two out of it. It's not that X gets bigger. Right. It's that... X stays the same, but you just get a copy of it. Right. And that means you get a copy of this and you get a second card out of your hand. Right. Um, I said that before the one downside to Electro Dominance is that you can't play X, X cost spells off of it. Yeah. I lied. There's another downside. You can't play your commander off of it unless your commander's in your hand. Um, but that's not a downside. <laughs> I mean, it is, but it's slight. It's a slight downside. I, yeah. I, you're doing just fine. Yeah. Um, uh, something to keep in mind: if you're using, if you're uh, using a, using it to get a planeswalker out at instant speed, doesn't mean you're going to be able to activate that loyalty ability. So you're really not getting any benefit there. I mean, I'm, I can't think of a situation where it makes sense to do that. So. I I would say the benefit there is that if you get it out on somebody else's turn, it becomes your turn. You get to then create blockers for it. But that's the yeah, only okay. thing I can see. Um, yeah, because you're not using the mana up that turn to cast it. Right. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. It's, I mean, at that point, the sequencing could be either way like you could have made the the uh the blockers and then brought out the the planeswalker but i mean you know whatever right um yeah i love this card we're gonna be back uh next week with a brand new season season 11 can't wait um it will be april 19th uh next wednesday so excited uh we're we're gonna have a great season for you some some cool decks some cool cards some cool topics some cool people some cool bruce some cool andy some cool temple of the false spot we're next to not optimized but our plays sure as heck are cool i'm andy uh, i'm bruce thanks so much for listening cool people may your cool fifth land be the temple Hey. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. Hey. Hey. <laughs> wait, wait. Before you go, I uh, just wanted to say thank you for listening. You can reach out to us via email at falsepodmtg at gmail.com or on Twitter at falsepodmtg. Bruce is at mana burned and I'm at Andy Weekend, though you'll definitely notice I use the podcast Twitter far more often. Now that we've got you here, make sure you subscribe, like, rate us on uh, whatever podcast platform you use. It helps us out. It gets us more reach. 
subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Uh, like a video there, leave some comments for more casual enjoyment. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back with some more timeless discussions about all things casual. So come hang out, and may your fifth land be the temple. Bye-bye. Should I do my best, Bruce? Bye!